of all, uh, thank you very much to the, to the Dublin Institute and the School of Celtic Studies for, for um, their hospitality. Um, secondly, uh, for myself, um, it was a great experience uh, being a collaborator with Fergus on the edition of Bechrepper, um, in the course of which I think I, I hope I learnt what textual scholarship really is. It was a very gradual process. It got in, percolated rather slowly from there to here, um, <laughs> but I'm deeply grateful for it. Um, more generally, uh, one notes actually in Fergus's career a progression from wisdom with Urk Morin to law. Now, most people make the opposite progression <laughs> from law to wisdom, sometimes rather painfully. <laughs> um, but I think I can speak for us all uh, when I say that though Fergus may have progressed academically from wisdom to law, he never left wisdom behind. And we're deeply grateful for that. So thank you very much. Well, uh, first of all, I'd like to thank the uh, director, uh, Professor Liam Branagh, and the school administrator, Eileen Nikonacha, for so efficiently organizing this conference. And I'd also like to thank those who gave papers and those who attended what has been a most interesting and enjoyable day. Aside from all the other positives, I would mention the strong P-Celtic representation underlying the complementary nature of medieval Irish and Welsh legal studies. I do not want to ramble on about my long association with the school over many decades, etc., and what it felt like getting an infix pronoun wrong when it was my turn to translate in one of Dr. Binchy's seminars. <laughs> my thoughts are rather with the future. On a personal level, I would hope to continue publishing and attending the seminars which are so central to the life of the school, as well as the Chinol and public lectures on various topics relating to the Celtic languages <coughs> and literatures. I would also hope that the vacancies in the school be filled as soon as possible and applaud the fact that permission was received earlier this year <coughs> to appoint a professor in place of Padraig O'Machon, who now holds the chair of Modern Irish at UCC. Let's hope that the senior professorship vacancy, when I canter off into the sunset, will likewise be filled with the minimum of delay. Today's happy event was conceived as a surprise for me, and I now conclude my remarks by way of retaliation with a little surprise of my own. And there's a story attached. The late Miles Dillon, senior professor at the school from 1949 to 1972, was an ardent bibliophile and a great frequenter of second-hand bookshops and street barrows, where he picked up many a bargain, mainly but not exclusively of Irish interest. And among his finds were four rather battered and ill-used volumes of the day book from a tobacconist shop, social centre and guest house for Irish speakers called Unstad at number 1B North Frederick Street, owned by Cahill McGarvey, originally from Remelton, County Donegal, and famed, among other things, for authorship of the words of The Star of the County Down. The day books cover the years 1900 to 1904, and they contain the signatures of visitors to Unstad, often accompanied by a poem or witty 
or even not so witty comment. <laughs> Many signatures are of well-known names from the political and revivalist world of the first decade of the last century and include Arthur Griefer, Arthur Griffith, uh, Sean T. O'Calley, Eamon Kant, Seamus Clandilloon, Torna, Richard O'Foulou, al alias Fiacra Elgoch, Norma Borthwick, Michal Kiasog, founder of the uh, Gaelic Athletic Association, and many more. The general flavour of the establishment can be gorged from the mock serious notice at the beginning of the 1903 volume, banning the use of English in the daybook. The Vriga will Agla er Aaron Stad, Gushgrievoch Gal Chlairi Egent, Berla in San Leor Sho, the Kianiu Agus de Quinitor Olive, Egor Starha Agus Shev Ashti Gwelge, Or Diem Agus Fogrim, Daran Leor Lion, Agus Dar Fesog in Vicul, <laughs> Agus Dar Megal on Ham Hroni. Ord, dear Yeskobliv on Stad, gan ein ochel berle, the Shkriva in San Lauer so, er agala boish, agus buon ega, the Chacht orhe, the Yaskiv on Kniv Hrana ud, agus er agla en neerhe, agam fein, agus eg so humplocht, sochi nasua, mar krochfer gach kyuntoch. The Schmigin Augusta Lea Vegel on Ham Hroni Rev Rotche. <laughs> Ni Bjog Lin on Maid Shah Orhe. But if English was under interdict, other languages were tolerated. And we find an ode to the Edelweiss in German from an Andreas Lang of Oberammergau. There are also entries in Latin, French, Spanish, Welsh, and Breton. An added bonus is that the day books are embellished by numerous illustrations, mostly in pen and ink, but some elaborately worked in colour. These mainly relate to current events and are of considerable interest to the political historian of early, early 20th century Ireland. The most prolific and gifted of the illustrators goes by the name of Mark Breagora. <laughs> My wife Elizabeth daughter of Dr. Dillon, inherited these day books and has agreed that they should be presented in perpetuity to the library of the School of Celtic Studies. Those of you who know me will not be surprised at the underhand manner in which I am gaining kudos by donating to the school <laughs> items which do not in fact actually belong to me. <laughs> And there is the added connection with the school in that a scholar who was here from 1990 to 1994, Sean O'Kearney, has published an account of the establishment on Stad Creelor Nahaf Yochana in 1993. So without further ado, I will hand over the four day books to the director. Thank you, Marcus. <laughs>